Zelda, come on. Hola community, welcome to another episode 186 of Blender Today Live, this uh, weekly gathering we do here from the Blender Studio to see what's new in Blender, the community, the anything that uh, surrounds Blender, Blender releases, Blender conferences, no, nothing to announce there. Although, this week, maybe, there might be news regarding that, so if you are in the area or uh, um, willing to travel, time to dust off your uh, passport if you want to hang out with other Blender heads, still news to come, but hey, it's good to be talking about normal life. Uh, as much as possible. What else? Blender releases. 3.1 is out and about. You probably are using it right now. Although if you're watching this, you're probably sticking with the latest uh, alpha releases. Although 3.1 came out as a really good release. Apparently it was okay. There were some reports already that are going to make it so that there will be a corrective release coming out next week. So what does it mean? It means that the 3.1.1 will come out. Um, I think it would be um, Wednesday. I gotta confirm, but around the midweek, uh, Wednesday or Thursday will be ready. So yeah. Um, what's up? The mic is clipping. The mic is clipping. Oh shoot! Yes. Uh, -oh. uh there. Okay. Let me know if that's okay. I didn't see the red light blinking down there. All right. Time to go into coffee, blender coffee mode. Not mate anymore. Let's uh, jump into what's new in Blender. So I have a bunch of, of, uh, of uh, updates for you this week. I have, for example, I, I just compiled Blender, but you know what? It's not enough. Let's compile again. Let's get the latest and greatest. Oh, oops, maybe I shouldn't have done that. There are quite some commits. Hmm, okay, never mind. There might be new things that I didn't manage to add to the list, but we I, I have a bunch of things that were on the list. So, um, first of all, we're streaming live, and there will be a Q&A section towards the end of the show, so if you want to ask anything, make sure that you go to blender.today, and there will be a thread there. Yes, I didn't know if there was, but Gabriel5578 made one. Um, and there are already some questions. So yes, go there, leave your questions, and we're going to be answering towards the end of the show. Um, you may have noticed that the thumbnail of this video has a character. It's different, yes, because I don't know if I mentioned it last uh, in the last episode, but there, we, there uh, is a new character on the Blender Studio or Blender Cloud. There is a new character that is free for everyone. This is not an advertisement. This is a free for everyone. It's free to download. You don't even need to be logged in. It's just a fun new character to use. And it has this cool uh, intro video and demo. Um, and it's used for 3.1. It's, it's to be used in 3.1 or 3.2. But yeah. Let's see. The other thing that I wanted to mention is speaking of video. So this is in the Blender Studio channel. The other uh, channel that got updates is the uh, Blender Developers. So if you go to Blender Developers, if you don't follow Blender Developers and um, you already follow Blender, maybe that's enough. But in Blender Developers, there are news mainly for developers. Uh, in the past, we used to share development news, news there as well. And it was a bit confusing because um, it was the same place to speak to developers and to share development. So this one, the latest video that we published over there, it is towards the advertise advertisement in Blender developers. What? I am shook. What is it? Um, okay, I need to check something. There, is, you should not see any advertisement on Blender 
channels in Blender Studio, Blender Developers, Blender.org, like this channel. All uh, unless there is like commercial music used, but this one we didn't use anything. What what the heck, YouTube? I heard that at some point YouTube was gonna force um, ad ads on every 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 channel. I didn't know it was so soon though. That kind of sucks though. It's not cool, YouTube. Not cool. Anyway. Um. So that means that we probably have to turn on, turn them on just to, because that money, who's, who's, who's taking that money for that ad that I just watched on a channel without ad monetization? Not cool. Anyway, sorry for the, I was just shocked. I, I thought we were like, yay, one of the few channels without ads. Nope. Anyway, um, let's continue. This video that is here is towards developers that use Fabricator, the developer of Blender.org portal, and want to um, and contribute to Blender. So if you're familiar with that, and um, you may know that the Fabricator is no longer under active development, so uh, there is a replacement that the developers are looking for, and there is a discussion going on here and on Dev Talk. So go. Uh, yeah, read up on the on the discussion there. It's pretty cool. Some some people even from GitLab uh, apparently are joining the discussion. Um, so it's good that it's getting some attention. But in case you missed it, go there. Okay. Let's uh, continue. So monetize the channel at this point. Well, I mean, if it's going to show ads anyway, right? better at least the money should should uh, be put to better use than just YouTube although they, they, they have a great service and it's free but that is all with my rant of today let's see oh, okay uh, by the way the 3.1 release that I mentioned before if you want to know what is going to make it to 3.1.1 I there is a li link in the description where you can see um, what it's uh, going to be put in here, although there is still one more week, so there will be more, um, this page will be updated with more stuff. Okay, time to get into what is new for Blender today. You, oof, that was loud. Let's see. So, the change of the week. First of all, let's talk a little bit about cleaning up. Geometry Notes is the title of this video. Uh, there is two, a few, three big changes. Um, one of them is a clean up. So if you are, if you have been using Blender in the in the past in 2.92 or 93, which are the two releases that had Blender with the old system, with the named attribute system. Well. There were some nodes that had to be converted from uh, the old system to the new one. And there were some nodes that were just kept around, <clears throat> although there was a note uh, that said that they would be removed before 4.0, Blender 4.0. Those nodes have been removed now. So it's been two releases already with that nodes, and it's 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 going to make developer uh, de yeah, development of new nodes and maintaining the old code much simpler. So by removing 12,000 lines of code, <laughs> over more than 12,000 lines of code, the old legacy nodes have been removed. They're going to show up as um, as undefined. So if you open a blend file that you made in 2.92 or 93, in and you open it in 3.2 it and you see some nodes that are undefined they are like bright red and undefined you might need to uh, open them with 3.1 which is the, the previous release and uh, this will be noted in in the wiki page this this will be highlighted there's just a heads up for you that are watching this stuff so here in compatibility there is going to be a big note regarding the um, the removal of these nodes as well. Okay. What else? You know, removing spring cleaning. By removing the old, there is room for the new. And the new includes named attributes are back. So, 
Isn't that... Okay, let me... Is, do I have an applause? Yes. Do you remember the discussions going on? When... Uh, okay, okay. Do you remember the discussions going on when Fields was introduced? There were two teams. Team Fields, people were... Some people were super excited about having the new system that is auto-magic. Because it... it you need less nodes. You can you can do things you couldn't do before, and it's just nodes where a field points to which index. You, you can do crazy stuff, and you will see it in the latest uh, demos. But there's still a need for named attributes to have things more organized. You have give it a have this attribute, give it a name, store it, put it somewhere, remove it. Um, it is important, especially when you want to share these and uh, these node trees, these node groups somewhere or you want to sell these nodes or put them uh, in your library it's good to keep those names around because then you have a reference and then you can write documentation around specific node trees node groups for example so yeah it's it is it is here so the three nodes are gonna find under by the way this is experimental i forgot to mention it's nearly illegal what I'm doing, that I'm sharing a feature that is experimental, but I know um, it is there for you to test it and it's going to be removed from experimental in 2.90, 3.2, sorry, 3.2. So it's not so illegal because uh, I like to show what is going to be in the next release. When something is not going to be in the next release, I mention it to you, especially it's towards the end of the list. So, okay, let's see. Um, we got some trolling already. So early, so early. Okay, next, three notes. Remove attribute, if you want to get rid of that attribute that you had that very specific and well thought out name. Um, yeah, you can remove an attribute with a name input. And you write the name of the attribute you want to remove. You can name attributes, which it's an input, so you just give it a name, or you can even use a string input. And then store, or also known as set uh, attribute, like you're, you're setting basically a name attribute. You're storing it somewhere. Um, super cool. It's amazing. They are added behind the new experimental flag. Yes, because they, the further development is needed, but also attribute search and name dependency visualization will happen as separate steps. So, pretty neat. Um, let's continue. Well, that is kind of kind of a big deal. I asked the developer, I asked Hans today, he's like, hey, is this the holy grail of best of both worlds, you know, team fields and team name attributes, are they going to be at peace now? And yes, they are. <laughs> so, super cool. Let's see. I'm curious to what people are going to be making with that. Okay, uh, speaking of uh, hands on fire, <laughs> the porting of uh, the nodes to or to the, the curve nodes to use the new curve data block continues. There is a task where you can follow um, all the nodes that have been worked on and the ones that are still missing. And this is pretty exciting because sometimes with some of them, um, they come optimizations, such as when the duplicate elements node has been um, upgraded. With it, it came a massive, massive app uh, improvement of 150 times faster to duplicate elements. How many? Well, the test was done by duplicating 10,000 uh, four-point curves to become 2 million curves. And uh, an approximate update of uh, improvement of 150 times. So it went from 3 seconds, so 3,000 milliseconds for you Imperials, uh, to about 20 milliseconds. That's so cool. So cool. By using the timings overlay, it was checked. So nice. Speed. Okay. Time to change topics into animation. The animation department this week has a new 
tool that is similar to the ones we received in the past about the blend to neighbor, blend to uh, to basis. Well, there is a new blend to default value impl implemented by Christoph that um, yeah, it's an operator that it blends the selected keys from their current position to their default value as defined in the property. So yes, a new operator. Um, it's under the menu key, under key, and it's called blend to default value. It doesn't have a shortcut yet, but because it's in the menu, you can just simply right click, um, assign shortcut, or you can even search for it. And in within from within the search, you can um, assign it a shortcut. I, I, could, I could just show it. Blender opens fairly fast here. So if I have a curve here and you have a keyframe, key then where is blend 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 slider operator blend to default you just right click assign shortcut or two quick favorites bam done cool the no this is the only uh, update in animation although Christoph is adding so many of these uh, operators. These patches actually go back to 2020. Um, I hope there's new ones coming up because uh, it keeps the the department, the animation department alive. Changing topics into cycle side of things. There are a few changes. So one is a small change to the limits of the scrambling distance multiplier. So it was hard, hard limit to I think 1.0 and now that is a soft limit what is a soft limit well in the in the blender UI so in, in blender in general the there are some of these um, sliders that have limits for example from 0 to 10 right sometimes that is uh, well what it, what you see in the UI it's it's often called the soft limit some sliders allow you to go even further than that and actually we can just do it here i think that you can set a soft limit in custom properties so um you have the soft limit and the hard limit the actual uh, hard-coded limit and that is pretty cool why well because in the ui you have control over what is sane as a value but uh, if you want to go further like with with colors you know you can overflow colors if you go into RGB, you do one, but you can also do three, it's five RGB, and uh, yeah, or or the same with the with the render uh, dimensions. You can go from zero to a hundred, or you can just go five hundred if you want, and then the slider will be a bit uh, harder to manipulate, but um, you get the point. Next. Jorge, you have not deleted the default cube. No, why would you delete this perfectly lovable cube? And if I delete the cube, I usually add it again. I'm an idiot, I know. Um, I like, like, literally is like delete and then shift A, cube. Okay, this um, change, the distance multiplier, which is scrambling distance, related to another change which is uh, allow enabling adaptive sampling with scrambling distance. So you can use adaptive sampling and adaptive uh, scrambling distance combined to achieve increased performance without noticeable correlation artifacts typically associated with this combination. So again, if you want to read more about all, all these changes, they are in the description of this video. You go to the bottom, there's a section called cycles. You can just click and uh, it's literally the same list that I'm going through. So you can you can actually go open all the links and close the live stream if you want, because it's, it's I, I'm just reading <laughs> I'm just reading the the links that I just posted. Another change that was done. It's a user user experience change. Is that I don't know if you ever had it had this that when you are rendering with uh, cycles you can oh there was a spoiler there I don't know if you now you probably didn't get to see it uh, 
if you're rendering with cycles, cycles is an engine that you can actually pause and then start again. Uh, however, if you were changing uh, from one um, mode to the other, like solid back to render, it will still it will stay paused and it wouldn't reset. And based on user feedback, it has been um, fixed. So when you change from like even if you pause the render, you go to solid and then you go back to render, it's gonna start rendering again because it will show nothing. It will show like just an it didn't feel like you were changing to render it because it was paused in before the render in preview. So great for UX. And speaking of UX or slash UI, there are a few changes in the user interface and uh, the UX, the, the key maps editing. So first, this is a small one. It's a... <laughs> um. I almost, I almost say what that's what she said, you know, the office, but I shouldn't, I wouldn't say it. <laughs> this is a short feature, a small one. Why? Because, oh, some people have seen it in the chat. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I've seen what I, what I spoiled before. Okay. Again. Why is it a small one? Well, because Dolly View has been there since dinosaurs roamed the earth. It, it's the Dolly uh, Zoom has been there forever, but it was never really uh, exposed in a menu. It was there, but if you wanted to change the shortcut, you will have to know in advance the name of the operator or... Yeah, there was no shortcut. So um, exposing it in the menu uh, makes it more discoverable and it's easy, you just right click and, and assign a shortcut or you can learn shortcuts from there. So if you find a Blender operator, a, a, a feature that is not on any menu, let us know. However, you can report a bug or I don't know, focus on, on no, I would say poke on Twitter, but leave a comment here, like, like just make some noise because um, every feature should be available in menus. Okay, speaking of clicking around, not really related, but um, there is a bunch of uh, changes that follow on the ones that from last week regarding selection, dragging, and the whole system has been rewritten. There is some um, fixes that were done even. There were some for like one day or two days, there were some crashes when dragging nodes because of this that has been fixed. This one in particular is for right-click select um, people, right-click select team, not the website, the actual right-click select in Blender, the key map. So um, this is the, the tweak tool, the tweak that, that you click and drag without selecting, like click and drag, that wasn't possible before, now it is. Support for differentiating the tweak tool from the 3D cursor when select is set to right mouse button, which is the the default the 3d cursor when you when you click left click it would um, set the 3d cursor now there is support for both click drag and setting the 3d cursor so it's, it's an experimental preference it's called tweak tool left mouse select and drag so go there enable it it has to be uh, set in the developer extras and um, the preference is only available once the Developers extras is enabled. So I have it enabled here. And uh, I did another spoiler there. <laughs> um, go to Kim up and it should be somewhere here. It should be somewhere here. If I'm not wrong. Right click select is the best click select. Exactly, Alum. X. It is. I hope more people will. I wonder if Blender would have changed the UI in 2.8 and introduced EV and all the great stuff, collections, but not have changed the selection to be right click, uh, left click select instead of right click select. Would that have any impact? I don't think Blender, like people have started using 2.8 because it was changed to left click select. It's in the 
flash screen. You can change it as soon as you open Blender. So I wonder. But that's a question I will always have because there's no way we're going to change that now. Um, all right. The next um, improvement, again, regarding selection. So uh, multi-object post mode. So when you are in post mode, you can, uh, since 3.0, you can have multiple objects, multiple armatures, different armature objects in post mode. And it was that um, whenever you select a bone, it will deselect everything else. So you would lose your selection when you go in and out of uh, post mode. That's no longer the case. That has been fixed. And uh, related to that, there was a refactor regarding uh, selection and picking uh, from the selection which fixes a bunch of things. It's mainly an internal change, but it fixes the selection of meta elements. So meta as in meta balls, not the Facebook <laughs> company. The um, cycling, for example, between objects in the meta objects in the meta balls, or it's called, it's, it's called meta balls still, meta ball, but it's not just meta balls, it's just there is a bunch of metas, meta plane. Anyway, uh, when you have multiple objects, like shift clicking on this to 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 go to like if you have many objects one behind the other, um, the behavior for selecting and uh, picking whatever is behind is gonna be the same, or it's gonna match other well, other objects like meshes or curves, which is pretty neat. I didn't even notice that it was it wasn't working the same okay right click select was ridiculous what do you mean was ridiculous it was awesome it's great it saved people's hands i started using because it changed to left click select right select was so annoying when using multiple programs but you can change it there's a preference for that there was a, there was a preference for that um anyway i i don't know am i the only one that whenever you open a new a new software any software a text editor first thing you do preferences the first thing i do for any any software even even this one that i use for for the sound i first thing i did i was go here and preferences um anything anyway let's uh continue new changes for actually this one is one of my very favorite updates for the week uh, of course with named attributes but this one in particular because uh, makes library overrides so let's let's introduce library overrides slash outliner it makes them so easy to tweak and to find as a user so this is based on some discussions that the the team here here had internally uh, based on feedback from the studio team that used library overrides in uh, Sprite Fright. Now, um, when uh, you're working with library overrides, there is a dedicated place. There used to be one, but now it's more useful. <laughs> so there is a dedicated place here for library overrides in the outliner. And I don't know if you get to see, but there's two columns. What does it mean? Well, it in one side is going to have the objects that you are overriding and their properties and on the right it has the properties themselves so you get a say say you get a file from an from an animator from a layout artist for example and you want to know which settings have been overridden instead of having to select each object and then go into like the settings to see which one is its color uh, cyan <laughs> or not instead of that doing that you just go to the outliner and you see a very nice list with everything that has been overridden and you can tweak them from here so this is fantastic and this is in preparations for having um, some sort of um like an allow list you know you can have like a block list or an allow list for example a rigger could say okay i want in my character asset 
I want to have all the these settings here to be overridable, but not the rest. Everything else keep it locked. Um, so those could be exposed in a similar UI. So it's easy to share a character from a rigging department to an animation department. They know what is available for them to to change. Uh, that is that's a that's a pretty cool um, improvement. Hey, people seem to like it. So I, I I explained it properly. That looks really useful. Now this is amazing. That's awesome. This is definitely cool. Okay, I am happy to hear that. <laughs> I was also one. This is pretty exciting. And I don't know if the develop the Leon or the other developers that uh, do the one pixel fixes usually. Uh, there is this is nitpicking. This is nitpicking. Feel free to ignore, ignore me. But there is a one pixel gap for. Well, actually, this one is one on the left and on the right. Yeah, they don't align. So there is something going on here. So if there is any developer, one of those pixel perfect warriors, pixel warriors, uh, they could fix it. I know no one is going to notice, but those one pixel misalignments, when they are fixed, it feels so much better. It's like it makes the entire UI feel more, more zen. Okay, next improvement in the... Well, let's talk a little... Well, I, I have two more things. So this is kind of poppery, kind of uh, grease pencil. In the grease pencil tools add-on, this add-on that comes with Blender that um, completes Blender uh, grease pencil features. It's also like a playground of those, set of those changes, if they should be available or not um, for other areas of Blender. Uh, they added a mirror flip button, which this really belongs in an add-on because it's it's the good old, you know, if you want to flip, if you if you have a, and I'm not gonna delete the, the poor cube. So if you have a, you know, if you have this render and you want to flip the camera, the, the good old, I don't know if it's good, but the old, uh, way of doing it is just simply scaling um, the x of uh, of the object by minus one, and then there you have it. It's a it's a flip, but it's a hack. It's not a real flip. It's a hack. Um, but anyway, the add-on does that basically. It's just a it adds a button to the sidebar where you can flip it. Um, although this is useful even outside of Grease Pencil, so I wonder if it should be in a, like an animation uh, tab here, and and maybe done properly. Maybe doing you know OpenGL calls or not 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 scaling the the camera. I mean it's good as it is. It's in an add-on, so yay. But remember to flip it back before rendering because it could cause issues, especially if you use EV or. I don't know how this is going to behave with screen space effects. How does it even work in that case? If I have a, a, a monkey here, for example, right? And then I add some effects that are camera. Uh, they have the camera size, for example. And then if I scale the camera, does it break? Um, but Oh, it only allow doesn't allow anything else than zero or minus one. That is interesting. Okay, maybe it's not too bad then. Still feels kind of illegal that I'm 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 looking for trouble. But anyway, if it works, it works. Diogo, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Next. Um. Okay, performance. Who wants to? spend half an hour waiting for overrides and linking and opening uh, like yeah overrides basically no one wants this uh, improvement comes from a bug report actually there was a bug report on how uh, the new override system can't do certain thing things than the proxy system used to do or if it can it just takes too long so um this is the commit. Basically, it talk, it mentions an improvement in performance that it went when generating the library override. It went from 
1725 seconds, which is nearly half an hour, to 45 seconds. So, half an hour to 45 seconds. That is a really, really significant improvement. But I was reading a bit more into it, and this is the bug report. And uh, it's super nice here, the, the user at the Morris mentions the yeah the, the the use case that they have is a studio and they have thousands of objects apparently and uh yeah sometimes it just takes too long and sometimes it just crashes but then when you read more about it um you can see that if um the discussion with the developers and even in getting some artists some riggers to talk about it then the user used blender 3.1 and 3.2 to test it and report it back with the with the what what happened. So this is super super useful. At some point, the developers asked the user to share a blend file that can be tested, right? That has this use case, just so they can be they can talk in the same language. And um, of course, some companies can't share their original files, and that's totally fine, as long as the issue happens on a simple file with like objects with no vertices, but still objects, right? In this case, um, and that was shared. And yes, apparently there is a rig with a <laughs> it's a rig with fourteen thousand objects, and uh, the developer, by using this file, managed to get the optimization, which is now hundred. Uh, no, I don't know how many times faster. So yeah, 30 minutes, 45 seconds. So, yeah, super, super nice. Uh, collaboration between developers and uh, and artists and riggers, TDs. And that is what makes Blender special. They get the artists and the users, the, the um, developers talking to each other, sharing each other, sharing each other, sharing files with each other and each other's time. Okay, time to answer some questions. I I run out of things to 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 say. So eight comments. That's pretty good. Let's see. So let's go to the bottom since we don't have too many. Okay, first of all, Blender 3.1 is amazing, according to Hamad. Good. It's gonna be even better on uh, in in one week for when 3.1.1 comes out. I have a thing to ask to do that to do with. I have a thing to ask the do big movie studios like Marvel, Warner, Sony use Blender for the VFX work because Blender is very powerful. So there should be one hit and big movie that use Blender. Uh, there are many studios that use Blender. There is, uh, it was mentioned, Warner Bros. is using uh, Blender. Some other companies, not every company can share that they use Blender. Uh, fortunately, in some cases, this is getting more more open. Like Spa Studios is using one um, for their next film. Uh, Netflix used one for them. And Unity is, is looking for artists too, that for Geometry Notes artists even. So yeah, there are way more studios that use Blender, but not everybody can talk about it. Strange, I know, but uh, that's how it goes. Sometimes it's, just, it's gonna change eventually, but sometimes things don't, even if artists want to say that they use Blender, maybe there's a, a wall of, like a sea of lawyers that prefer not to, for whatever reason. Maybe they, maybe they don't understand open source, they don't understand the license, they think they have to share everything. It's not the case. Next question by Mr. Isometric. Particle system here has a bug without the texture space. The particle system is out of, uh, is end of life, so I don't know if this is gonna get, be fixed even. Maybe it will. Closed, resolved. Has been closed because... Okay, cannot... Well, it was even... Tempted to be fixed. Should I open a work request again? I don't know how to do that. It was probably due to a bug. We'll need to check. Okay, actually, they are even looking into it. Thank you, Philip. 
Um, the well, there was a discussion thing going on on March 9. So just uh, ask again or go into the chat into the Blender Coders channel and ask there. Um, next question. Hey Pablo, love the streams. I love Blender. I've been using it for two years. Two questions. Will they be doing a Blender conference this year? I would say it's 99.97% sure because, you know, COVID uh, restrictions are being lifted. Here in the Netherlands, there is really nothing left. Like, there is, in a few days, uh, the Netherlands is playing against Germany in the big stadium. There are parties everywhere uh, in the streets and stores. You don't have to wear a mask anymore, only on, in Metro, but I think they're even going to remove that. So yeah, everything is pretty much back to normal. However, we don't know. Um, hopefully it's going to be over by then. It's okay. Let's see. Mm. But yeah, actually there is a, a venue that has been updated, um, has been visited and picked and it's a good candidate. So yeah, hopefully it will happen. Is there a way? Oh, can I can I mention? Can I think? I don't know if I can say more things, but even the venue, it's going to be bigger than the one the last time, which was already bigger than the previous times. So if it happens, it's going to be pretty big. So decode it. Book your flight, the and dust off your passport. Um. Is there a way to do multi-layer painting in Blender, like there is in Substance Painter? I really don't like Substance Painter. Uh, multi-layer painting in Blender. You can't... No, you can't paint multiple layers at the same time. You can paint one layer at a time. In the texture paint, um, you can... In texture slots, you can add texture, like a base color, for example. And uh, yeah, just start painting, basically. This is, this is, how, this is the workflow at the moment. Um, those images, then you have to you have to save them and save all the images, and then you you can use them in the uh, in the node editor for shading and stuff. However, there is no um, there is no multi-layer painting yet. However, it's one of the topics for these years layer textures design projects and also strategic targets. Um, for texturing. It's one of the topics for this year, so hopefully we're going to see improvements there. Um, next question. Do you think there will ever be an object attributes domain, like detailed attributes in other systems? Mm, that will give access to RNA props like camera depth of field and focal strength. Could also give access to custom props in geometry nodes. So many possibilities. Um, yes, absolutely. Object attributes, I don't know if um, we, we need something outside of geometry nodes for that, right? We need like collection nodes, something to, to handle physics, for example, interaction, rigging even. So I think if we ever get collection nodes, collection modifiers, wouldn't that be awesome? Well, that would uh, make it use, make use of it. And it would need object attributes. Hmm. Jorge Zombie asks, not to be that guy, but I'm actually that guy. Yeah, you're the guy that doesn't say hi, Jorge. Hello, how are you? How's it going? Have you got a good weekend? Sorry, just teasing. Skull Vertex Color, when? Uh, when you say good... <laughs> hello, no, I'm kidding. I noticed nobody has asked in a few weeks, so here I am asking again. Um, if you follow the Skull Dev branch in the Fusion um, Blender... Um, Blender, yeah, if you just go to Blender branches, the Skull Dev branch had a big update today regarding um, BBH caching system. Actually, it was not today, it was on the weekend, 5 a.m. on Saturday, it was uh, posted. So follow the Skull Dev branch. Um, oh, and regarding that question on the stream, I switched to Blender because on top of that beautiful that question at the stream. 
I switched to Blender because of on top of that beautiful UI, it had that industry compatible key map, which made my muscle memory of a few decades kick in and save me from a few months adapting that made it a few days. By the fourth day, I was already making the same stuff I made for decades on the other softwares. I now love the industry standard key map because shortcuts were my main obstacle while learning Blender. Uh, that's good to hear. I, 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 it's, it's nice to hear that people are using that key map because I haven't, I don't often hear people using the key map and it's one of those things that developers have to maintain. Um, and if there is someone in the community that is willing to maintain that whenever there is a new feature coming, uh, they has to be added to the industry. Not, not every feature has to be added, but the ones that make sense. So I would say if anybody around here with a little bit of knowledge of Python and the Python API of Blender uh, wants to maintain it, uh, jump in. <laughs> Ocular Evolution says, Hola Pablo, hope you're having a great day. Fantastic. Best Monday. Um, I was wondering if you watch this. Uh, no, first, if it's a Facebook video, I haven't been to Facebook since uh, ages. Because we have a, fa a Blender Facebook uh, account. And uh, I use uh, Buffer or something else to, to, to publish there. So I don't really have any more reasons to go there. Um, I haven't seen this though. What is it? It's an Octane advertisement. Meshlets. Nanite for Octane. So like subdivision. Uh, what part in particular? The first about mesh that starts at 0, 0, 038. So it's like nanite, like subdivisions. Um, I think Blender will become an absolute force in the industry if Cycles had its own version of mesh LEDs for texture and streaming. This uh, tech would also probably greatly offset quite a number of people who were disappointed at Blender. Departure from the VFX reference plateau. <laughs> Is it really that Blender's departure from the VFX reference? It's just a different Python version. <laughs> it's not even that off. Um, and it's not like Blender is not suitable for VFX anymore. Just need to compile it. I need to get one dude to or do that to to compile Blender with static libraries. Um, okay, make Blender both both Blender and Cycles that much more appealing as a serious tool for consideration in large-scale large, large scale production work. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Have an awesome week, Pablo. Thank you, Ocular Evolution. I haven't seen this, but I know it's a, yeah, it's a must. If you want to have unlimited anything, streaming um, of textures, streaming of meshes or everything should be, uh, yeah, it's a must. Although I would go further and say that it's just not a cycles thing. I would even argue that Blender needs some kind of streaming capability for files. Like imagine if you, like if, by using USD or some other tech, like you open a Blend file that has 500,000 million objects. Nowadays it would take forever to open because he has to open everything at once. Well, what if he could stream those objects? What if he could open just the basic blank default cube and then over time uh, load the rest like maybe load some placeholders some empties around and then load the geometry streamed and uh, that would be awesome and uh, so yes it's a fantastic technology i think we sh we should implement that we like i'm gonna do anything <laughs> blender should implement that on a blender level so also eevee benefits from it who knows Hello, Paolo. One more question. Is there any update for the EV rewrite? Um, Thomas Dingus keeps deleting everybody's comment and I can see if there is any updates. Sorry if it sounds rude or something. Uh, it sounds a bit rude <laughs> the way you wrote it, but uh, keeps deleting everybody's comment is, is if the comments are out of context, then yes. Um, EV rewrite? Well, um, if you open Blender 3.2 alpha, and you go to edit preferences. If you have developer extras enabled. And you go to experimental. You're going to find 
in prototypes EV next what is EV next well 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 have you heard of cycles X I guess EV next because it rhymes with cycles X EV next otherwise it's a it's a mischance to call it EV evolution or flareon or jolteon vaporeon <laughs> Um, yes, EV Next is the prototype of what is going to be the next, uh, the EV rewrite. So there is a link here, which is the same link that you point to, where you can follow and see uh, the updates regarding this. And as you can see, the excitement is real, developers are aware of it. And uh, yeah, super exciting because by being here as a setting, it means that developers can uh, iterate on it and ask users for feedback and testing more um yeah more easily because what is ev next well ev next is a it's it's the next iteration of of ev and it's it looks like this you go i should ah what i mean i could have used the clickbait and call this video i know that by the end of this video there will be a bunch of youtube videos with the clickbait EV next that will show absolutely nothing because there is nothing. You can choose the engine and and that's it. If you go to the preview, there is nothing. You go to you maybe you can do this. You can add a monkey and do this. Like the solitaire in Windows 98. Well you can do these kind of things. Pretty exciting. Um, yes. Work in progress. There is nothing here. Renders, I don't even know if... Yeah, no, that's the, no preview. No, nothing. But it is here in response to all the people um, asking for it. So yeah, even next. It's there. The code is already on it. There you go. First tutorial. Even next. Here is what no one wants to show you. I, I use even next and you're gonna you're not gonna <laughs> guess what happened next with even next although miss chance flareon flareon is a lovely pokemon next oh flareon should be the new physics engine right like a, a new manta flow or something uh, hello, Paolo. How are you today? The last question um, by Gabriel says, I recently saw a post in developer.blender.org about Sculpt Roadmap that Show Eager was uh, working on, which looks amazing, I have to say. When I looked at the uh, looked up the grant, he got it. It was only for three months, which means he will only work on the Sculpt Paint branch uh, move Sculpt Color from Experimental, which is only the first part of the uh, roadmap. So my question is, will he be working on the rest of the roadmap? Or just the first part. I am. Um, I'm not uh, f uh, totally sure. I, I think the grants you can you can see in development of, in the Blender development fund under grants. You can see here the who's who has a grant currently, and Joe is under this three month sculpt. So unless this gets renewed, which I'm not sure at the moment, we should have some dates here. Um, um, I'm not sure. I, I, I can't say. But um, that will depend on the developers, on how the performance was uh, back then. But the um, we, we just saw that there was a new, in the branch, in the, the, the Sculpt Dev branch, there was a new commit on Saturday regarding the PVVH support, like performance improvements. So maybe uh, we'll see you. Maybe it was updated already and we haven't updated this page. Uh, I have to ask uh, the lie or Ton about it. Okay. I think I'm going to call it. It's 6.06 .06 p.m. here. How's everybody doing? How's the chat? I wish Pablo watched the video about Meshless. He didn't even turn on the audio. Um, no, I have a problem with audio, actually. I can't listen to audio. I I'm using... <laughs> I'm using... Uh, Firefox now for sound. There is something wrong with my with the audio uh, now, but I'm using a version uh, Pop OS that is no longer maintained. 
So I can't complain. I'm using an unmaintained Linux. But today I rebooted my computer after two months, 60 days. Um, is everything okay? I think that there is only thumbs up from Blender today because people use the right mouse button. <laughs> 50%. I wish Paolo watched the video about meshlets. Uh, I'm going to watch it, but watching a whole video without ex exactly knowing which part is it. I, I read the nanite part. Thanks for the awesome stream. Thank you. Or sick. Does it mean also Goral shading? Mayhaps. That is a great render engine. Groundbreaking. Only Blender can drop a bomb in a live stream for a new renderer. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Okay. Russia. Yes. And Ukraine también, uh, as well. También. También is Spanish for also. You could hook up Arduino Tiny. Uh, machine learning to AI, listen to voice command and switch to... What? Anyway, I think that's my cue to leave because I couldn't understand a line of that. Let's... Uh, let's get to it. Let's call it a day. Thanks everyone for staying until the end. It's been uh, quite the live stream. We, uh, we dropped a whole new render engine. <laughs> that... that can do absolutely nothing at the moment, but we seen the holy grail of geometry nodes. The old two point. I was thinking today that people that only use long term releases, so 2.93, 2.83, like those that update only once, uh, that, that are released once a year, but get updates for two years, if you only ever used LTS releases, so 2.93, that one had geometry nodes named attributes and the next LTS, 3.3 .3 LTS, which comes at the end of the year, it's going to have both fields and name attributes. So if you were doing geometry nodes only with LTS, you didn't miss a thing. <laughs> so pretty interesting. Okay, time to uh, call it a day. We have so much room on this side. Okay. I will talk to you. Uh, watch your ear holes, by the way, because I think the audio is a bit loud today. In 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, I'll talk to you again. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> EV2. It's not EV2. It's EV next. Okay. Thanks, everyone. It's been great. I will see you again, same place, same time, for the last time, because the week after, next week, is uh, next Monday, it's gonna be the last Monday in this time zone, the week after, that the other Monday, it will change for one hour or less, I think, for every for everybody outside of Europe, if you're in Europe, still 5pm, anyway, um, that's it. I see you next week, same place, same time for another Blender Today Live. Thanks for tuning in. Have an amazing week. Happy blending. Ding, ding, ding.